Key number two to building a growth mindset is to celebrate mistakes. So as we saw from the last video, when cells fire together, they wire together, and there's violination that happens. So basically, what we see from the research is that there's a type of electrochemical response, I think it's called the ERN response, that happens when we make a mistake. And what we see is that only when we make a mistake, we don't even have to be aware that we made the mistake, that is actually when the brain grows. This totally makes sense because if we are doing something correctly, it means we already have the myelinated pathway. So there is no new brain networks that are getting myelinated or activated in that sense. So the only way that we can grow our brain is literally move out of our myelinated pathways, which means move out of doing things we do well, which means move into er territories where we are not going to do well. We're going to make mistakes, we're gonna fail, we're gonna look awkward and clumsy and fumbling. So. That means that every time we make a mistake, something new has just fired, something outside our myelinated pathways, which means our brain is literally growing. The more you get this, the more authentic it is when you actually embrace and celebrate mistakes in the classroom. There's a lot of different ways teachers are doing that. Stanford has a lot of different ideas. I've included some of those links there. One is a teacher that calls it her favorite no. She has students uh, do equations on, on cue cards and uh, index cards, collects them, and anonymously picks out one that is, has a mistake in it, but does two things. First, she points out the learning that actually did happen. So there might be, let's say in this equation here, there might be a piece where the actual answer is wrong, the final answer, but there's a piece of it where that person, and it takes practice for a teacher or leader or a parent to pounce on and figure out where did learning happen? Where was their actual learning and an understanding of the concept? She points that out first, always. Then she talks about where there could be a refinement that happens, and she allows the students to volunteer different answers. What that does is she shows the students that she loves mistakes because it's creating a whole atmosphere for all the students to learn, oh, well, I didn't get that part, but I got this. And, you, and when you see in the classroom, she has students really raising their hand and staying engaged in, in the discussion because they're feeling like it's less of a scary environment to do this because everybody learns from other people's mistakes also. The other piece, though, to this is, again, not to go into extremes. If a person is consistently making the same mistake over and over and over again, the other piece that has to happen here is some moment of self-reflection and changing and adjust adjustment and refining of the strategy and the process. You cannot just keep doing the same process, the same strategy over and over and over again, getting, we all know that saying about getting the same results. If someone is making a mistake, there has to be some kind of new navigation. There has to be a piece of self-reflection. So it's not just celebrating mistakes, it's also about the self-reflection, adjustment, and talking about new processes and new strategies, trying to find new ways of learning. And one last piece, and I've shown this in my, my other videos, and this part of this comes from Seth Godin. Um, he has a book called The Dip, but I, I'd go in a little bit different of a direction. Um, but this idea of the dip is that this is us here, <clears throat> and as humans, we can have a vision for ourselves. That's something other creatures can't do. We can imagine something that doesn't yet exist, a reality for ourselves, a new skill, a new mastery, whatever it is. That's our vision here. We get really excited because we see it, and we can't wait for it to happen. But as we move towards this vision, we actually move away from our myelinated pathways. So it starts to feel harder and harder and more uncomfortable. We have no idea what we're doing, and many of us find ourselves in this dip where we have no idea how to do it. We're really awkward, and we've lost sight now of ourselves as this master of whatever it is we're learning. Most people give up here in the dip, in that valley. And unfortunately, a lot of stuff in society is designed to weed out people because they're not going to push through that discomfort. Um, Seth Godin talks about, for example, organic chemistry is the most difficult class anyone will ever take, and it's the first class in meds or pre-med for this very reason. They don't want doctors that are going to give up here. They want to see the people that push through that discomfort. So. Um, as we get closer and closer and as we're pushing through and we're getting further away from our myelinated pathways, eventually, if we stay consistent, if we keep going and we, st and we keep um, allowing ourselves to focus on that vision, 
um, we will eventually have some myelination that starts to happen and eventually it gets easier and easier and we get closer and closer to seeing our goal. So that's the dip, that's celebrating mistakes. I actually even can sometimes take out the word mistakes and I really just call it brain growth because honestly there aren't really mistakes in that sense in the brain. It's just uh, uh, going down, you know, highlighting and, and activating one thing and then refining an adjustment. So it's always about growth um, when it comes to mistakes. So we're going to go into the next keys in the next videos. Thank you.